Welcome to Successful Living with Bill Knappick. Every week we talk about success and everything that goes along with it. You'll learn the principles of success, how to achieve success, and learn to overcome challenges that may be getting in the way of success in your life. You'll hear from Bill Knappick, a radio personality and business development expert, along with insight from special guests. If you're ready to find your path to success or take the success you're enjoying to the next level, stay tuned. Successful Living with Bill Knappick is on right now. And welcome to the show, Successful Living with Bill Knappick. That's me. And today, Successful Living with Mark Graney. He is a very gifted author, author, to say the least. His newest book is called Agent in Place. It's part of the Gray Man series. If you know about that, you know it's a tremendous book. And it's released this week right here in February. Also, he has co-written with Tom Clancy and has carried on the Jack Ryan character after Mr. Clancy's death. Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. And I'm excited about The Gray Man, and, and I'm starting at the at book, I think, number seven of your series, the first I, I've read uh, about, uh, about Court Gentry, fascinating character, and it started with the very first book called The Gray Man, right? That's right. Yeah, each one of my books, it's very important to me that they're all standalone. You don't have to read the first uh, five or six or whatever to, to find out what's going on. So it throws you right into the action, explains who everybody is. But there is a longer story arc if you do read the whole series as well. It does make you want to read all the books. So the book is called Agent in Place. It's out right here in February. So let's tell people a little bit. First, let's say they didn't hear, haven't heard about Court Gentry. Tell them a little bit about Court and what's happening in this book or what you want them to know about Agent in place. Yeah, he is a former CIA officer, a, a paramilitary officer who has been on the run for a while, and now he is working a freelance job. And his, his job in this is he's, he's sort of uh, hooked up with a Syrian resistance group, and his job is to kidnap the mistress of the president of Syria and recover her baby, who is in Damascus. So he's in Paris, and he's in Damascus. And uh, there's a lot of sort of treachery and twists and turns along the way, but he's a, he's a guy on, on a on a noble mission um, with a lot of dark forces against him. To say the least. And and when you talk about, and, and to say he has a unique set of skills, I mean, he really does, especially early. I won't say anything more about it than this, but early on in the book, he does an incredible it, it, uh, scene where you, you create an incredible scene with many characters, with him as the, the lead force in the hotel room. And it is just what he's able to do with with the forces, as you're saying, that are against him is really incredible. But to take that texture and then later introduce the part where he's going to be helping and rescuing a baby, that that's just fascinating right there. Well, thanks very much. Yeah, I um, I did a lot of research in Paris. I actually went the uh, the building I used as this location is the same building where Kim Kardashian was staying when she was robbed at gunpoint the year before. <laughs> so I, I did a lot of research on that robbery and the mechanics of the building, and then uh, and then went from there. But yeah, there's a uh, during that scene, there's three different forces at play. There's the uh, the Syrian bodyguards, and there's some ISIS attackers, and then you have the gray man who's trying to uh, get get one person alive out of this big melee. Yeah, it's incredible. Tell us how how the character Court Gentry, how how you created him as the gray man, and 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 tell people about his skills. That I mean, what I've seen so far in in the book, he's really incredible and able to take care of himself. Yeah, he is. Um, the backstory on him is that his father owned a, a um, uh, was was a cop in in Cal in uh, Florida and um, started his own firearm school and and. Court Gentry sort of like grew up around cops and whatnot. Then he was brought into the CIA when he was a very young man and um, trained as a singleton asset. So he went around the world in this uh, group called the Autonomous um, um, Protection Department, and and it's not real. But um, he then after that he was folded into a group called um, the Special Activities Division, which is a, a real unit of the CIA. Did a lot of anti-terror stuff. So he has. Uh, Worked as a as a hitman, as a rendition artist. He's kidnapped people. He's um, you know he's done all the spy craft, all the trade craft that you've ever heard of, and um, so now he's you know late thirties, working freelance in this book anyhow, and um, yeah he's, he he brings all those skills to uh, try and help the Syrians against the uh, Syrian dictator in the civil war. 
And yeah, and all that was just done on a Monday too. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. he really is so fascinating, and he obviously stays in shape to be able to do what he does. But it's interesting too, as you're with this character, you recre- you create him and describe what what he's thinking, where he's at, and the things around him. Just the way he looks at things as he's out there walking around, you could see that he has the mind of someone with these skills. I mean, he's always watching out. And, and earlier you mentioned about your research at the hotel, as far as your research goes, is incredible as well. But you, you've also had training and worked alongside people that have these skills of, of taking care of themselves and close-up combat bat and things like that. Tell people about that. Yes, I've had a lot of um, training, total civilian, but I've had a lot of training um, alongside uh, military and law enforcement at, at different private uh, training facilities around the country. And um, so I've done long range shooting, close quarters combat, battlefield medicine, all that sort of thing. And um, and more important than me learning how to operate the guns and describe the uh, the sound and the feel and all that sort of stuff, more important than that is the, the people that I meet along the way you, um, in military and law enforcement. So it's, it's I've gotten a lot of connections from that, as well as working with Tom Clancy. That really sort of opens doors for you. So I, I do try to get into the mind of the, the hero in this series so you can sort of see that trait graph firsthand everything that he's learned well and and let's tell people about your your career one of the things that struck me is as i researched you that we talk about doing what you love and and hopefully we all do what we love and find a way to get paid for it and and get paid well hopefully but as we're out there it doesn't happen a- accidentally it, it's true i think that you had a, a regular job like most of us that maybe you weren't finding your full fulfillment but then you started writing books in your spare time and then they became a hit let's tell people about that yes i i, I worked very lazily at being a writer for about 20 years with no success just because i was I just never really finished things and um was working on one particular book for 15 years without finishing it. And then I finished that book in uh, 05, and I wrote the next book in seven months. So it's like once I I did it once, then you realize it's very doable, and you just sort of have to buckle down and spend a little time with it. But it is, as you said, it's absolutely what I love to do. Um, And if it if it felt like work along the way, I never would have had a career in it because, <laughs> you know, I, I did have a, another career as it was. So, yeah, I, I was 42 years old when my first uh, book came out, and I've put uh, this will be, this is my 16th novel since 2009. So, since I uh, oh, you know, wow. got published, I've I've been cranking them out. I'm afraid to say no to anything at this point in my career. And 2009, Mark, is not that long ago as, as we think about it. And for you to to hit the success, I mean, your your books by themselves are so successful. And then let's tell people about Tom Clancy, certainly a, a giant in the industry. But how did you meet him, and did you read him before you all found each other? Tell us about that. Yeah, I was a, I was a massive Clancy fan. The first um, thriller I ever bought in my life was Patriot Games, which was his third book, I think. Um and I, I had read every Tom Clancy book, and of all the publishers that we tried to get to publish my first book, The Gray Man, um, the one who we signed up with, um, Tom Colgan, was also the editor for Tom Clancy. So um, that was in 2009. In 2011, I got a call, and they asked me if I would be interested in co-authoring a novel with him. And uh, I went up to Baltimore a little bit later and um, and met him, and we talked, and I did three books while he was still alive, and he passed away, unfortunately, right before our third book, Command Authority, came out in 2013. And pretty quickly after that, the family asked me if I would continue the Jack Ryan series. So I did four of those before stepping away at the end of the last year. I've I've done seven Clancy books in six years, and it, it was time to step away, I think. Incredible. What, that uh, being an author is a, a special skill. Being a s- successful author is another story. But but tell people about when you take over the the helm, if you will, from Tom Clancy and and how you how you do it uh, a little bit in terms of you still have the the Jack Ryan character and you have the style. But what are the things that you're thinking as you pen for Tom Clancy after he's gone? I told myself, I had a good conversation with myself at the beginning of this and said, I'm not going to try and channel Tom Clancy. I'm not going to try and write um, in a particular style that looks like him other than 
um, plot-wise. Uh, a great hallmark of Clancy novels is you have about 10 things going on that don't seem like they're connected, and they sort of weave together at just the right parts. And and I liked that, but I was already doing that in my own writing because because I've been a Clancy reader for 20-something years, so um, it wasn't something that I designed to uh, to mimic Clancy. It was just sort of what I had become after reading his books. And, um, you know, the first book that I did the first two books I did, both in 2014 in the Jack Ryan universe, I just wanted to, you know, create really good stories with these characters that everybody knew and loved, and I wanted to be, you know, honest and, and faithful to how the characters would act and what they would say and all that sort of thing, but without trying to have some particular writing style. And I think it worked out pretty good because the the novels are uh, are you know fun and exciting, but it's not an attempt to um, you know to look like a, a Tom Clancy novel of 15 years before. And what an honor it is to have the family ask you to, to do that and to believe in Absolutely. you. I mean, that that's incredible right there. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, we're talking with Mark Graney. He is the author of the Gray Man series. The book he has out right now is called Agent in Place. And, Mark, let's tell people about, say, the writing discipline. I mean, it takes you to do the research. And do you have a, a certain time you write every day for a certain length of time? But how do you how do you bring these these books out? How are they born and put together? It, yeah, there's there's the due date of the book, and everything is looming towards that. So I, my my work ethic, as you can imagine, gets more and more as as I get closer to when the book is due. Um, I right now I'm working on a book for 2019. I'm I'm on a book tour and I'm in a hotel in California and got up at six o'clock this morning to sit in a Starbucks for a few hours and work on this book that's not coming out until May of 19. Um, and it's just it's just where I am in the, in the story. And I, and I do try to uh, a good day is two to three thousand words of writing. But there's a lot of days where you end up backwards, you know, with less words than you started out with. But every day the book gets a little bit better as long as you're uh, focused on it and you've got your nose to the grindstone. And when you say two to three thousand words, how many hours would that be? Or, or does it vary, I suppose? That, that's really funny because there's been days I've written two thousand words in an hour easily. And wow. then there's been days it's taken me there's been weeks where I haven't gotten 2,000 words just because of where I am in the story and um, some other editing things or whatever. But sometimes if it's an action scene or something I've been giving a lot of thought to while I'm out walking my dogs or something, I can I can bang it out literally as fast as my fingers can go. And then other times it doesn't work that smoothly, unfortunately. Well, as you mentioned, walking the dogs, I too walk two dogs every morning. And a lot of inspiration in my life comes in when I get back to the house. Sometimes I write a few things down. It's something about hanging out and walking the dogs that, that helps creativity, at least for me. So, yeah, same here. And, and, and when you write d- these two, 3,000 words, and you take a weekend off or you just keep on going all seven days? I, I write seven days a week, 52 weeks a year. There's days where it doesn't look like I'm working very hard, and I'm really not. And then there's days where I get up super early and work super late. It's so funny. I, I hear other authors, people always say, you know, like, what is your writing? you know, schedule. And then what they tell, you know, they'll tell them. And I always think, is that your real writing schedule or is that your ideal? Because I'm always thinking about my ideal schedule is, you know, I work from six to about 11 and I'll take a break. I'll do some reading in the afternoon, but uh, life gets in the way. And then sometimes you end up banging out a lot more than that. So it, it just really depends. Okay. And that was, you're reading my mind. That was going to be my next question. You're, you're writing books and using your mental powers for that. As far as reading books, apparently you do make time to read books. And one of the things I, I have, I struggle with uh, uh, focusing. Okay. So I like mm-hmm. to read books. And when, when a book captures me, I, I could keep on trucking. However, sometimes I hear about people that say, oh, man, I could read real fast, or I don't know how many words per minute, but there's some people that read real fast and have a, a great ability to focus. So my question is, maybe it's a, it it's a, sounds funny, but how do you read when you read and you make the time to read? Unfortunately, I'm not a speed reader, and I know people that are legitimate speed readers. It's, it doesn't seem to be a gimmick. It seems to be a real thing, but uh, I don't possess it. And so I read probably just at an average pace. I do retain what I read pretty well. So a lot of times I'll talk to people that read a lot more than I do, and, and I'll remember a story better than they will. So I think there's a benefit to you know taking your time with it. I have to read a lot of research for you know like nonfiction research for the for whatever project I'm on, but I also uh, read you know, the novels in my genre, um, I'm asked to write blurbs for people. So I'll, I'll get, you know, books that aren't coming out for the year before. And I just, uh, I, I listen to audiobooks. I read whenever I can. 
and um, it's never enough. And I really do wish I could read faster, but um, it's certainly better than, than, than not spending my time doing that. Because I, I was also thinking about this. I'm certain at every point in, in, in the history of the world, there's a lot of distractions. But right now, I think there's more distractions than ever. Because sometimes when I sit down to, to read, my cell phone's not too far away. And for some reason, I'm still concerned about the, the cell phone. And we just have so many distractions in life. I think reading in itself becomes an art and to be able to just stay buckled down and to, to get the most out of the words. Yeah, I, it, this is a, a for a writer or a reader. This is a tough time because I mean, there's an incredible benefit for with social media and the internet and all that other stuff. But it's also a big, uh, you know, sort of mind vacuum if you let it be. So um, you know, what what matters is if you're if you're into a book and it's really drawing you in, then it's as you said, it's not hard to just stick with it. I can read a book in a day. But that's not because I'm reading fast. It's because I'm reading literally for 16, 18 hours. But a lot of times, um, you know, it's, if a book, a lot of times, a lot of nonfiction stuff I have to read for research for my novels is a little dry. You're just looking for that one kernel, that one nugget of interesting thing. So I'll read a 150 page, you know, government document. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of hard to burn through sometimes. Well, I will tell you, as I'm reading Agent in Place, the book that's out right now, and we're talking with Mark Graney. Mark, as, as I'm reading your book, it's incredible. You are such a master, and I'm thinking of putting how you put the words together. And going back to the hotel scene, it's so so much action, and the way it's described. I mean, how do you do it? <laughs> and give it, give us a word without. I mean, giving it away. But tell us about constructing a scene like that, and what what you're thinking, and and, and all that. I spend a lot of time thinking about the reader's experience and, and how clear I can make things for the reader. So I don't overcomplicate things, but I want to, uh, you know, I want the reader to see the, see the images. I want them to smell what's going on and, and feel the, you know, the ambient temperature, know if it's day or night, know the weather, all these sorts of things that has to be sort of interspersed even within an action scene. So I'm spending a big part of my time when I'm writing it thinking, Okay, am I? Do people understand this fight? We've all read books where you get a little bit confused by what's going on in a, a fight scene or some sort of action scene. And we've all seen movies where they do these incredible quick cuts where you have no idea who's hitting who or whatever, and it's just sort of for show. But as a writer, you know, the more you, more time you spend thinking about the reader's experience and and how they're processing the information that you're giving them and you want to give them as little friction between the story that you want to tell and then how they read it uh, as possible. The more time you think about that, I think the better writer you end up being. Well, as I'm thinking about court gentry and in, in not just that scene, but some, all of the scenes, but especially that high action one, one of the things, I, in addition to the sights and the sounds and the visuals, I could feel the danger. And, 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 and that truly is how you put that together. I don't know, but that's why people enjoy your books, I guess. But you could feel the danger, and you're afraid for him. You don't know, hey, what's going to happen to him and, and, and some of the other people? Yeah, the stakes in these stories are always really, really important. And I'll have people, like a, some main character might die in one of my books, and I get so many people that are upset about Amen. it. Amen. You know, I, I want to tell, you know, I always do tell them, I'm like, you know, there has to be some skin in the game for the for the heroes in this book. Otherwise, it's just, uh, you know, it's a it's a superhero film. And, and I really do want to push the envelope with with uh, the action and sort of things, you know, strain credulity a little bit. But I, I don't want things to be impossible. I don't defy the laws of physics in my book or anything like that. So, um, you know, I, I really want the stakes to be high. And there is a lot of danger, you know, bullets going both ways sometimes in these novels. That's right. Let's tell people, Mark, they want, I want to see your website. What's the website? It's uh, my name, Mark Graney, G-R-E-A-N-E-Y, books.com, B-O-O-K-S. And it has information about you know all my stuff there. I'm also on social media on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And and give us a, a word on how it felt. There you are working a job. You probably like the job okay, but you're right. Your love is to write books and to get the books out there. And when you, you finally became successful, where the being an author was your full time thing, what was that feeling like? When it's like, wow, I can do what I love and get paid. It, everything worked out really good in the end, but to be perfectly honest, it was it was horrifying to leave my job. Um, my dad had passed away a couple of years before, and, and I swear for the first five years of my career, even with all my success, I'm like, I was telling myself, if my dad was still living, I'd probably st still be working in the office because he was so, he's a very 
had a blue collar mentality, white collar guy with a blue collar mentality. And he was always like, you know, it's the, any success could be fleeting. You need to have that stable job. But there was this, this point where um, I realized that I, I always thought that, you know, I'd become so successful and get enough money. Then you, you quit and you just throw the money up in the air. But it was it was this situation of me trying to figure out my budget for the next year and, and if I could do this because I, I had agreed to write a couple of books. And, uh, you know, not huge money, but, I you know, I had signed the contracts to, you know, I had to sit down and write them, and I just realized I couldn't do it and work my job as well. Fortunately, my my first book sold to Hollywood, and I got another book deal, and the Clancy thing came up. So everything worked out in the end, but at, at first it was pretty horrifying. His book is Agent in Place, Mark Graney. Also, you mentioned Hollywood, Mark. Right now, Hollywood is working on a movie of one of your books. Let's talk about that a little bit. My first book in the Gray Man series is just called The Gray Man, and uh, that sold to Hollywood right about the time the book came out in 2009. But it's, it's bounced around a couple different studios, and um, Sony Pictures had a three-year option on it. And then at the end of their option period, they purchased the the rights to the to the work. So Sony owns it now. They're they're motivated to make it because they've had to put a good bit of money into it, and uh, they've had me. Uh, I had a couple of discussions with uh, director that is interested in doing it, and I think they're working on a script, and uh, hopefully something will happen in the next year. At what point do they pick who will play Court Gentry? You know, it's it, pretty late in the game, or not too late in the game, but, I mean, they first have to have a script. There's been various scripts um, bandied around and various directors who've been attached at different times. So I've heard names, you know, throughout the years, but um, – you know, right now, I, I'll probably find out roughly the same time that people, <laughs> other people find out. Well, the Gray Man series is incredible. Just the whole the whole name, the Gray Man, just is, is cool, too. And Court Gentry, oh, yeah. Mark, with the last couple of minutes, let's, what else would you want people to know about your books or anything else or even your dogs? <laughs> about my dogs? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, as you were saying earlier, that, you know, it is it is very helpful for me to kind of I'll take my dogs to a big dog park. I live in Memphis, Tennessee, and we have this massive outdoor off-leash park, and I take them for an hour every day. And I, a lot of times I listen to audiobooks because I'm, I need to get through some material, but more as as often i just spend time just sort of brainstorming the s- stories i'm working on it, it it helps me um you know come up with ideas but it also helps me when i'm not actually in front of the computer it feels less like work and more just like daydreaming <laughs> and a lot of good things come from that so it it's been it's it's kind of ha- helpful to decompress from you know the work that you have to do and 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 realize that it's stuff that you want to do at the same time by any chance, is any one of the dogs named Court? No, no. <laughs> okay. I've got one named Ziggy and one named Lobo, which really aren't action star <laughs> names. So I could have, <laughs> I could, I could name a character Ziggy, but I don't think I'll name a dog Court. There you go. And you can go to his website. It is markgrainybooks dot com. That's spelled Mark M A R K G R E A N E Y books dot com. And Mark, what else should we know about uh, any future projects, or what else is going on? I'm already starting on next year's Gray Man book, which will be book eight. It's called Mission Critical. I also have another book that will be out in 2019 that I'm wrapping up right now. It's a big military novel called Red Metal that I'm writing with an active duty Marine lieutenant colonel. So it's kind of a big Russia versus NATO war in Europe story. And uh, that's something I've been working on all year. Well, it sounds exciting. Well, you certainly have a fan right here. I love Court Gentry, and I'm going to read some more of the Gray Man series. He is Mark Graney. Go to Mark Graney, G-R-E-A-N-E-Y, books.com. Mark, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Very nice. And until next week, you've been listening to Successful Living with Bill Nampick and the one and only Mark Graney. Go to Mark Graney, G-R-E-A-N-E-Y, books.com. You've been listening to Successful Living. Glad you tuned in. And, oh, yeah, go to RadioBill.net to see and hear all the shows. That's RadioBill.net. Thank you, Mark Graney. Until next week. How many bridges are